Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition stops stories. More opportunities for the private sector are on the horizon as amendments to the Fiscal Incentives Act are tabled in Parliament. The NCPC forges ahead with its online productivity measuring tool. CARICOM heightens surveillance of fake drugs. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle are clear. More opportunities for the private sector are on the horizon as amendments to the Fiscal Incentives Act are tabled in Parliament. Minister for Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, Honorable Bradley Felix, says the amendments will allow for the service sector to capitalize on emerging opportunities and trends globally. In its current format, the Act offers a range of incentives to manufacturing entities and includes tax holidays for a maximum of 15 years, waivers of duties, and consumption tax on imported plant machinery and equipment. Honorable Bradley Felix notes that since being established in 1974, the Act has lost its relevance in this new age, given the government's strategy and development goals. The current Act, it does not allow sufficient flexibility that would enable the private sector to take advantage of emerging opportunities and trends on the global market. We are very aware that there are opportunities that currently exist, for example, through the EPA, the European Partnership Agreement, which caters to our service providers and goods manufacturers. And with what we are trying to do, it will enable these service providers to take advantage of the opportunities that exist for trade. Similarly, Mr. Speaker, the recent extension of Article 164 under the CARICOM Treaty will enable our manufacturers increased opportunity for regional export such that opportunities can be further enhanced. And by that, we will be able to support these companies for further expansion. However, Mr. Speaker, we recognize, and I, I, I'm all too familiar with it based on the number of visits that I, I have by various manufacturers, that the inherent time limitation, which is 15 years, it has come to serve as a deterrent for mature manufacturers who are considering expansion-related investments to increase their productivity and their competitiveness. So, Mr. Speaker, we need to think of remedial measures, and we need to speak long-term and short-term. The minister recommended that in the long term, government must be proactive in creating and sustaining conditions under which the private sector can continue to grow and compete on the international stage. He also highlighted the need for a comprehensive review of all of St. Lucia's regimes in keeping with international best practices. In the short term, the act will be amended to allow the private sector to take advantage of fiscal incentives with, among them, other things, the inclusion of services as a sector. Just to, just to explain industry, it means a service manufacturing or processing industry, and two, it includes deep sea fishing and shrimping, if deep sea fishing and shrimping form part of, a, of an integrated processing operation, and it does not include agriculture and tourism, as these already have their separate legislation. So. Um, approved services means a declared service under Section 5, and service, Mr. Speaker, means a service specified as in Schedule A. All changes under this section, Mr. Speaker, are geared towards the inclusion of services as a sector to be considered for fiscal incentives in the development of industry. However, Mr. Speaker, Schedule 1A, and we'll get to that a little bit, provides a listing of the specific service categories under four broader service subsector headings. And we have heard about it before, um, but I would again go over it, Mr. Speaker. One, creative industries, professional services, spa and wellness, and ICT. Fiscal incentives offered to service providers will be limited to this listing. And as I indicated, Mr. Speaker, this is the beginning. As time goes on, we may decide that we may want to expand, expand at least. The National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, the NCPC, is forging ahead with the online version of its productivity measuring tool called the Pro Tool. 
The NCPC is mandated to identify and analyze issues which affect national competitiveness and productivity and provide solutions to policymakers and other stakeholders to positively impact productivity and economic growth. Measuring national productivity is therefore one of the core activities of the NCPC. Productivity is a ratio of actual output to total inputs. It is a measure of the efficiency of production. For businesses, measuring productivity growth is vital as it translates to higher profits and the continuation of business. The Pro Tool, developed by the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, NCPC, is a dynamic productivity measuring tool which assesses productivity levels and provides feedback on weak identifiable areas within a firm. Director of the NCPC Fiona Hinks had indicated that via funding from Compete Caribbean Partnership Facility, a product design and development company has been contracted to convert the Pro Tool from its current Excel spreadsheet platform to an online application. So right now we are going into full development into making it an online platform and so we are hoping that early next year we'll be able to launch the tool and to be able to encourage everyone to measure the productivity. FASOV is a product design and development company out of Trinidad and Tobago, contracted to develop the online version of the Pro Tool while improving the customer experience and final output. Azim Abdul is the external director with FASOV. So what we're going to do is actually we've decoded the Excel uh, data sheet and we have our developers actually figuring out what are these kinds of formulas that people are working on. So we're at step one right now, which is actually engaging people with the Excel sheet as it exists right now to just find out if it's actually useful in that form. And at the end of today's session, what we found out is, okay, there are a lot of things that need to be tweaked. So our, our first goal is actually figuring out which ones we're going to tweak, which ones we're going to leave alone, because time and resources permitting. Uh, the next step after that is actually creating a web platform itself. From November 20th to 22nd, Consultations were held with a cross-section of stakeholders, both in the private and public sectors, soliciting their feedback on possible improvements to the updated version of the Pro Tool. The Pro Tool is an innovative, first-of-its-kind product for St. Lucia and the region. Managing Director of Convert Solutions, Inc., Terence Elliott, said using the Pro Tool is akin to getting a blood test, analyzing the results, and taking the necessary action. I believe that information is powerful. It is, it is key for business development. So any company looking to assess their performance and project into the future, correct their, improve on their, on their, on the operations, it will be something that would be hand in hand that they need to have at hand as we go through. Tasia Judah highlighted that the Pro Tool could be employed effectively within the two businesses that she's involved in, Island Adventures, a touring company, and Solar Connections, a solar energy firm. Solar connections, it will help us in terms of how quickly we move stock and decide what are the problems that are stopping us from meeting goals um, that we may have set, whether it be short term or long term. And Island Adventures, Island Adventures provides a service. It also helps a company like that uh, where it comes to sales, the customer experience, um, efficiencies. So how we use our assets to carry out those services, it would give us a lot of insight uh, into, into those things and helping our operation just overall. Consultant with Compete Caribbean, Dr. Kyron Swift, said Compete is pleased to continue providing support to the NCPC. Compete Caribbean's main purpose is to promote and stimulate the development of Caribbean economies through supporting the private sector. It is funded by the governments of Canada and the UK, the Caribbean Development Bank, and the Inter-American Development Bank. We, we assisted in even the establishment of the NCPC, the establishment of a commercial court here. We're currently working on the development of an entire competitiveness agenda whose objective is really to, to change and to lift at the front level the way in which the, the country functions and, and, and punches above its weight at a global level. The NCPC is hopeful that the online version of the Pro Tool will improve the productivity data gathering by making the tool more accessible to the private sector. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. The government of St. Lucia has sought approval from Parliament to borrow six million U.S. dollars from the International Development Association for the OECS Regional Health Project. The project seeks to enhance the country's capacity to adapt and mitigate against the impact of climate change across the OECS region. Tabling the motion was Prime Minister Honorable Chastney, who says that it is as a response to demand for financial support for the preparedness for public health emergencies 
expressed by St. Lucia, Dominica, Grenada, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The project consists of four components. Improved health facilities and laboratory capacity, allocation of 4.4 million US dollars. This component will support the refurbishment and equipping of selected health facilities to ensure continuity of care and improve laboratory infrastructure and equipment with correspondent training. Component two, strengthening of public health surveillance and emergency management, allocation of 1.3 million US. This component seeks to improve the completeness and quality of the, of the reporting chain for surveillance activities from the national to regional level, including improvements in interoperability and development of a regional dashboard to monitor trends. Component 3 will cover institutional capacity, building project management coordination, and Component 4, the Continued Emergency Response Component, CERC, which aims to provide intermediate funding in the event of an emergency, such as a disease outbreak. The project is relevant and consistent in mitigating and or preventing public health risk and the economic consequences associated with infectious diseases. Project beneficiaries are an estimated 1.5 million population covering the entire OECS region, given the public goods nature of public health, emergency and preparedness and response. While four of the seven full member countries are participating in the country, in the, in the, in the project, country level activities are expected to yield positive regional spillovers, and the investments made through the project are expected to improve the health security in the region. In St. Lucia, the regional project will be implemented through the established implementation unit, the PIU, within the Ministry of Health and Wellness, which is currently implementing the 2018 approved health system strengthening project. Health ministers across the region are heightening their surveillance of substandard and falsified medical products. So says Program Manager for Health Sector Development at the CARICOM Secretariat, Dr. Rudolph Cummins. The Sankin English Francis of CARICOM News Time reports. I saw that um, there's a report out on two medicines, okay? Both of them made by reputable companies, generic companies. But when one looked at the batches and the batch numbers, the company that said they have no batch like that. Somebody has tried to duplicate the company's product. And one of the, the medicines is an antibiotic used very frequently to treat children who have bacterial infections that make them very ill. So people who have tonsillitis, who have resistant skin infections. It's a very, very powerful antibiotic. The World Health Organization has acknowledged that the circulation of counterfeit pharmaceuticals is a problem that appears to be growing internationally as global supply chains become more complex and e-commerce increases. And the WHO has taken up that, that cause because they may not have seen this type of false duplication before and they've made a worldwide circulation to look out for these products. This, this is a good sign and it is solidifying our health systems and making them, hardening them against untowards effect once we start to streamline the way in which we register and allow medicines to enter our markets. Dr. Cummins told CARICOM News Time that Ministers of Health at a recent meeting in Washington discussed a system called Vigicarib that is expected to police the pharmaceutical industry. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Small household electrical appliances, when faulty, can give rise to big problems. If you have just purchased a small appliance from a store and you are concerned about the safety of the item, or an appliance has been at home for some time subjected to wear and tear from regular usage, have it tested by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards. It is better to be safe than sorry. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sport. 
Welcome once more to another update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. The Library Youth and Sports Council hosted a proposal writing session presented by Ulrich Alphonse. The session served to provide the knowledge and skills of proposal writing to participants. Participants were taught the guidelines for writing proper proposals factors to consider in budgeting, as well as useful hints and tips which would help make their proposals more appealing to potential donors or investors. Following that session, participants were treated to a short skit put on by the Babuno Youth Synergy Group, the Bellevue Social Transformation Officer and other youth on human rights. The Ministry of Youth Development and Sports will be making a formal announcement of St. Lucia's team to defend their Winnet Islands under-15 cricket title early next month. This announcement will come during a news conference scheduled for Tuesday, December 3, 2019 at the Ministry's conference room on Miku Street. Ahead of that briefing, Ministry officials held a meeting with parents of the selected team members Thursday morning to outline various procedures before the team departs for Dominica where the tournament will be held from December 8th to the 22nd. Last year's tournament was held here in St. Lucia. And that's your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports for today on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Department of Health and Wellness is continuing to ensure that the health and well-being of its citizens is a priority through its health outreach activities. More in this report from Fidel Neptune. The Department of Health and Wellness, in collaboration with the Special Services Unit of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, recently hosted a health fair with the aim of bringing healthcare services to the police officers. Health educator Nadej Smith Lambert says the Department of Health is very pleased to continue embarking on those health outreach activities, which will assist with ensuring persons maintain a healthy lifestyle. So what we're doing basically is going out to the workplaces. SSU is not the only workplace. We actually, it's a, um, part of our mandate to go out to workplaces and to do a lot of health education and of also offer services because we want persons to learn their body. We want persons to, it's supposed to be that you go to a doctor at least twice a year. However, some people say they don't have time and it's also a financial burden on some persons, so they go at least once a year. Now some persons really don't have the opportunity of going. So to meet that, we actually bring the services here because we think that it is essential. We know studies have shown that people to understand your body, to be able to detect, for detection, for prevention, you need to seek medical services. Police Constable of the Special Services Unit, Francilia Sherwin, says this initiative is extremely important as it provides a much needed opportunity for police officers to access a necessary medical screening. I wanted to bring awareness mostly of health, especially because of the hours that we work, um, ensure that we stay in good health. So we also have nutritionists here to help us to eat better, to, I guess, tell us how well we need to sleep and basically to ensure that we are aware that we need to be in good health in order to continue the work that we do. The health fair offered services such as blood pressure and blood sugar testing, eye tests, BMI checks, HIV and syphilis testing, among others. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. Point pour caution. Et fait tout ça au ni pour faire pour sauver de l'eau. Laver bagay sale à dans un bécine de l'eau, pas quitter de l'eau à couille. Aussi, pas quitter de l'eau à couille, l'air ou kachi ou épan. Si toilet bol ou ka kole ou ni pou mette ten an di de bak la. Toilet bol la ka kole si ou ka wè kole a de bol la avan ou flosh li. An toilet bol ki ka kole ka gaspye an chai glo. Servi an bom pito an hoz pou lave moto ka. Le ou ka lave had, servi de lo wè se a pou ouze fle ou. Le ou sove de lo ou ka bese manye a ou ka servi tepe wan man. Sove de lo tout le ou ni an chans. Ek chonje tout de lo e pontan. Sase a komisyon hod wasko. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. Mese madam, Departement Akin Responsabilite, 
kwa informasyo ang guverma sa CGIS. Masama pi Televisyon Nasional piya NTN kapwa sa to novela kwe ol. Kwa sa to Primus Hutchinson. Yon gwa de ma shafet pou prepare l'hôpital Owen King pou komase operasyon a total. Premier Minister Onema Alain Chasney prezate yon bil a kay konsit wesetma kini pou fe epi sete amedma pou adwese les ofisye publik ki kay ni pou touve eployma a l'hôpital sala. Magwe la te ni yon lo deba konsane aksyon pou fe l'hôpital la opwe privé, Premier Minister Chasney deklare ki gouvernement pa jame ni plan pou mette l'hôpital Owen King privé. L'hôpital Owen King ek lot institution sa te ka forme gwan etablisman anwet gwan cheme millenium lan. Ek alani yon morso legislasyon ki ka fe ek posib ou yon bod ki ka yon plas pou govene tout operasyon te institution sa la. Ek osi moun ki ka chache travay. Se lan pwoye minis chasne, pyason ki ka yon avoudwe travay e pi facilite sa te sa la pa ka yon ni pou vwe aplikasyon pou servis publik me kay sa fe sa direktiman pou le administrasyon institusyon e kay ni pou swiv te wek la ki bod la etabli. Femen de Chasne eksplike ki aranjman sa la ka prezeve le servet sivil paski se selman an dipatman servis publik ki yon ofisye sa trove yi sorti dan yon biwo pou travay a dan yon lot. Me la pa di pies provisyon pou yon ofisye publik sa trove yon transfer ou yon organizasyon ki pa an servis publik la. Sa se prinsipalman, se lo pwoye minis la, pou prezave pension ofisye sa la. Pwoye minis chasne, bay asiyans la ki, se ofisye ya kay touve yo an OKI yo, aba yon wanjman kote, si yon ka pies nesisite wive, yon sa witoune plas la kote, yon te jaka travay avan, alo yon pa kay ped pension yo. Se institusyon sante ya ki aso wout gwan chemen milenium lan, se l'hôpital Owen King, institusyon de santé sevel ek institusyon pou adwese situasyon ek tretman de poblem alkohol e dwog. Yon proje pou prezeve tout plas de ewitaj pe ya, ja komanse, sa ka fet epi asistans gouvernman Meksik, anba ajans Meksik pou korporasyon nasyonal pou devolopman ek osi institut nasyonal de Meksik pou anthropologi. Gouvernement an set li si ka chache fason pou poteje ek prezeve tout l'histoire pe ya. Pou pozal pou proje sa la te prepare an pa epi asistans national trust set li si ek lot organizasyon kan sosyete archeological ek historik les autorite de menajman des afè marwen an vil soufriye ek minister des afè touristik. Yon delegasyon de peyi Meksik ka yi an peyi ya an be han peyi ya depi deja ek pou moutwe set li siye te meye manye pou sa konserve ek proteje de ves plas ki ka pote l'histoire pe ya. National Trust la ka kwe ki konservasyon afe kulturel ek ewitaj fes important pou ne pot pe yi. Apa me se plas la ki ka pote la tewe se Pigeon Island, Vigi, Omon, Valle Dauphin ek se plasman de menajman de Piton. Apa me se aksyon ki ka fet pou fè des asesman, pou strikti, pou determine meye fason, pou prezeve de evitans sa la, kay adwese devlopman pou dwi touristik, posibilite de investigasyon archeological, ek ase meye fason pou menaje pou du sa la. Misyon teknikal hod Meksik, kay osi chache manye, pou devlope kapasite les ofisye an peyi ya menm, pou wanje, viwe mete an nef, ek wipati de plasman evitans sa la. De reposidatif de organizasyon rasta an peya, ja bay wipinyo yo konsene de mash ki ja an plas pou dikriminalize marijuana. Timen pas ya, plizye reposidatif gouvernman ek lot ajans ni privé e publik te komble an studio GIS pou te ofisyalman prezante yon konsit ki kay wes konsa pou etabli tout se weg la ek administrasyon ek operasyon biznis marijuana an set isi. Konsit la ki an ba avokat Michael Gordon ka touve yi an ba jurisdiksyon ministre des Afè Investman ek biznis internasyonal an yon a Bradley Felix. Misye Paul Francis ki kondet plime kon Ras Levay ki se yon mam le kosit Ras Safari e kosi se yon mam le glize Ras Safari ta se naya benge osi se yon mam asou konsit sa la ek kwe se yon twe bon devlopman. 
Quand on a bien cela, je marijuana, c'est un bagage nous, as Rastafari, nous a passé en chaque tribulation pour. Que si on change ça qui fait un bon Jimmy, que bon, c'est Ganja et puis Rastafari, tu as pu qu'on ait brutalisé, plusieurs manières. Juste toujours là, les gens qui ont souffert, tu as juste toujours. Si on a parlé de la marijuana et de l'égalisation et du framework, là, nous avons aussi mentionné un peu de reparative justice. Parce que pour ces gens qui conservent dans cette liste, c'est Rastafari qui a actuellement introduit la marijuana dans le pays. Vous comprenez? Et puis, vous avez vu que c'est un mouton noir, black sheep, vous avez vu en anglais. Oui, donc, so, le travail commissionnaire, nous avons allé, nous avons commencé bien soon, nous avons commencé à aller à ces différents communes qui sensitise les gens, éduquer les gens à bord de l'industrie de marijuana. Clement Poche, premier connaître avec Ras Zibaya, aussi, c'est un membre de l'église Rasta, et qui est bienvenu à l'initiative là aussi. Puisque moi, quand je suis en chai Rasta, je suis en chai en chai tribulation, en tant qu'il passe, on va aller en chai de nous, en chai de nous, aller là la hall. On chai de nous silen la jol. On chai de nous hatape kon nou mo. Ou kopan la peti mari wana ek di fwa bay kon sa. So sa ki ka fet la, mo e son bon bagay e vi gouvetman invite nou fwa mhaos of naya bingi pou participe an le commission na. Mo e son bon bagay ou kopan pou invite nou an sa ki ka fet la. So mo e fil wel pou chonje loa à votre mari ou à moi, je suis un bon bagage. Ou à moi, puisque ça a changé un chai bagage. Ou à moi, comme je dis, à votre la hall pour la JC, c'est prisonnier qui est là pour mari ou à moi. Nous ne sommes pas les trois pays qui nous ont arrêtés et bien victimisés par ces policiers-là. Parce que Rasta, il y a deux boutons en transport, en minibus. Il y a aussi Rasta qui a été avant pour sortir et pour search et qui ont dit que marijuana de l'eau qui a été au sommet et ça sent bon bail qui fait là et bien monsieur madame ça c'est côté nous après un autre bout de nouvelles nous aujourd'hui à mon cas monsieur autant pour qu'à garder mon cas vite au prochain et puis moi encore c'est dire quand ça fait la vie n'y a pas cette autre nouvelle à quoi il y a après ça mon cas vieux pour cette autre michel merci au pile primus and here's a look at what's happening to us weather wise Generally fair skies occasionally becoming cloudy with a few showers mainly over the Windward Islands. An upper level trough and jet stream will cause some cloudy periods and a few showers mainly over the Windward Islands during the next 24 hours. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. Tides for Castries Harbour high at 4.23 p.m low at 11.22 p.m. Tides for Beaufort Bay, high at 5.30 p.m., low at 12.49 a.m. Seas, slight to moderate with waves 3 to 6 feet or 0.9 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 6.10 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.